O Lord our God, we gather together today to give you thanks and praise your greatness. We praise you for your wonderful deeds in our lives. Your power is limitless. Your wisdom is unparalleled. Your grace is overwhelming. Your love is never failing. You're always faithful and loving and caring for all of us. So God, receive our gratitude, our hearts, through our holy hour. Let our worship be acceptable for you and bless all who gather in your name. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. I forgot to uh, introduce. <laughs> we had uh, um, Dan Pearson, he's a substitute of Ron, our organist. So we welcome you, <laughs> Dan, and thank you. Will the congregation please rise? Color guard attention. Color guard advance. Post the colors. And salute. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please join me in the Scout Oath and Law. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the Scout Law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight, too. The Scout Law. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, friendly, helpful, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, clean, brave, clean, clean, and reverent, too. You may be seated.
please rise for the call to worship. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And the light shone in the darkness. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And the light shall not be snuffed out. Amen. Let us sing, Shine, Jesus Shine, number 2173. You can also look at our media. You may be seated, and it's a time for children's moment, and Tabby and Paul will help us to uh, share the message. Good morning, you guys. So last week, you guys uh, were working on stuff for your duty to God. It's one of your requirements to advance, right? Yeah. So you guys each wrote a poem or a story. Um, would you guys like to say what you wrote down? Our Father sleeps. Oh. Our Father sleeps. Leaps, our father made people, our father made houses, our father made houses. All right. Hunter. Two, 
What does that say? You wrote it, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it says. Yeah. Dear God, I am thankful for my family, friends, my house, and my church, my food. All right, good job. And Hero. On my honor, I am happy that I have a house, a roof over my head, food, water, a school to learn, and a whole bunch of friends and family. Amen. Amen. Madison, you have anything that you're thankful for? My house and my family. Very nice. Um, during the week, you know, there's different things that you can do, you know, for your duty to God. You know, read the Bible, happily serve, do chores around the house, be kind to one another and other people, and pray. Is, can you guys do that for a whole week? <laughs> no, you, you can do it forever, right? Yeah. So I'm going to give you guys each a paper you take home. And then you mark it off, the things that you do okay, through care. the whole week. Right? Okay. Let's see. Let's see. There's one for you, one for you, and I have one for Hero. Yep, there we go. All right. What else does it mean to do your duty to God? You guys know? What, what do you guys do that you, um, is a good thing? Yes, you do. Where are we at right now? Church. Yeah, you guys go to church on Sunday, huh? You pray. So, yeah, keep up the good work. So, yep, go to Sunday school and you learn. Learn different lessons. Right? Yes. All right. What's one thing that we do at the end of children's message that everybody does? Everybody does. Yes, we do the Lord's Prayer. Can we all stand up and do that? Whose Father, our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray to the church, pray for the church and the nation and world. Let us pray now. God, we thank you for bringing us all together this morning so that we are able to hear at this moment that we can stay with you and get your presence and your love that surrounded in this holy ground. God, we have heard so many concerns, and at the same time, we have joy in our lives, in our family. God, bless us 
as we share the joy. May we share more so that we can joyfully give thanks to you. As we are hearing so many concerns in this world, God, hear again the cries of people wherever they are. You be there with the hands of Christian, hands of spirit, so that they not be alone in those situations. But God is helping them with a uh, lot of hands of Christians everywhere. God, keep us, our families and friends, and in comforted people who lost their loved one. And those are grieving still for loved one. God, comfort them each and every day in their <coughs> sorrow. And bless all who uh, work in this community and then give them purpose in their calling to be with those who are broken, to be with the people who are struggling each and every day. God, at this time also, we pray that you help our nation and all the leaders in your care and give them your guidance and truth and hope and direction for this nation. We pray that also those who are sick and hospitalized in need of your healing and care, and especially we lift up Dean and hospital and also uh, Wild, Pastor Fred, and uh, Heidi, and Justin's mom and grandmother, and also uh, Luna, and all the people that we know in our hearts, we lift up them to you. Touch them wherever they are with your power of healing. And also we pray for uh, people who are struggling with their jobs, and, and give them your confidence to find a solution for them and also uh, bring them new job to make them happy. We also lift up prayers those are hungry, homeless, unemployed, refugees, undocumented, or prisoners. God, you be with them. We lift up prayers for all the people, all the churches, and who are affected by all the natural disasters or virus and war or gun violence. And especially we lift up our Han, Han and his family in China and all the people in China at this time and, and the people who are affected by a um, lot of uh, uh, trouble this day. God be with them. We lift our prayers for uh, Pastor Crystal as she's uh, almost uh, uh, done and now is ready for uh, writing for thesis and uh, uh, ordination process. God, we are very grateful for the news and, and continue to give you all and guidance and knowledge. We pray for our church and all the leaders and also the ministry and mission that we are uh, open up to do new things in this year and make, uh, make us to be more joyful, whatever we do in the church, and bring us all together in your love and care for the community, wherever people are there with their concern. We will be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, O oh God. We also lift up the future of the United Methodist Churches, and we also pray for ourselves and our family to be a disciple of church and also disciple of uh, Jesus Christ so that we can be uh, more making the change in the world. Holy God, hear this and all our prayers in your name. And those spoken, those unspoken, those lifted up and those lifted in our hearts. We entrust ourselves, our lives, our way of bringing to you May we be found faithful in your eyes and caring for all the people that you are trusted in, in your lights of teaching for our children and our, our, all the churches. We all pray all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who guides us every day. We say, Amen. So our...
prayer hymn going to be Sanctuary number 2164. to the Lord. Let us give him with our joyful heart and our thanks, thankful heart. Stand and sing it. Join me in prayer of dedication. Loving God, we thank you today for your blessings that you bestow upon us all. Lord, may we all give with gladness and sincerity. No one ever gives a present to someone with a reluctance, and we should never give you what already belongs to you with a reluctant either. Bless these tithes and offering this day. We love you, loving God. Amen. Our scripture today is Psalm 46, verses 1 through 7. God is our refuge and strength, a help always near, in times of great trouble. That is why we won't be afraid when the world falls apart, when the mountains crumble into the center of the sea, when its waters roar and rage, when the mountains shake because of its surging waves. There is a river whose streams gladden God's city, the holiest dwelling of the Most High. God is in that city, it will never crumble. God will help it when morning dawns. Nations roar, kingdoms crumble. God utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of heavenly forces is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our next scripture comes from the book of Peter chapter 4 verses 12 
and 13 from the Message Bible, 1 Peter. And it reads as follow. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thing of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for this is the day that you have made. May the words go forth in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, this morning I want to speak on the issue of when pain knocks at your door. When pain, problems, and pressure knocks at your door. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to speak to you on a very sensitive topic in which each of us has dealt with in some particular way, whether it's spiritually or mentally. All of us can relate to the issue of pain, pressure, and problems. Everyone has problems. You have problems, I have problems, and many people make the mistake in believing that the presence of problems in their lives is an indication that they are unlucky or they are out of the will of God. Yet the truth of life is sometimes God's plan includes problems. Yes, what I've learned in my uh, life is problems can be a tool in the hands of the master. Because when a problem is present, it is there by divine permission. And if it comes by divine uh, permission, it comes through commission, and it contains a purpose and a plan. Can you take the, me down a little bit? So when problems, thank you, when problems show up in your life, which God does not cause our problems. It is God who permits our problems to be used for eternal purposes. God can use whatever you are going through, and that's good news for someone this morning, that God can use the worst situation to work out the best for those who trust and believe in him. God can use a bad situation to bring about glory. Many of our problems are caused by the enemies of our soul which attempt to control our thoughts, our actions, and our deeds. Some of our problems are caused by the communities we live in, economic issues, or just problematic people. But it does not matter where the problem comes from because God wants to use your problem to work out the best within you. Anybody can bring good out of good, but God is the author of bringing good out of bad. And I want to encourage you this morning to take a look outside of your problem. Remove uh, your, uh, your eyes off the why, the how, and when to see how God is using your issue to bring about a change. First Peter 4 and 2 says, friends, when life gets difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God is not on his job. But be glad you are in a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. The scripture says that God has French benefits for those who choose to manage their problems in a faithful way. God does not delight uh, in seeing his children go through frustration. In fact, the book of Lamentation 3 and 31 says, God takes no pleasure in making your life hard. No, God doesn't enjoy putting roadblocks in our path 
nor seen his children in pain. <clears throat> but God does deposit purpose within the pain, which leaves us more powerful once the pain passes. God has a purpose for every problem you go through. And I know someone cannot see it now, nor relate to what I'm saying this morning. I know someone sitting in the pew may be aggravated, frustrated, irritated, concerning God's plan and purpose, but we must learn to live in the situation based off the revelation, not on the basis of the information or the explanation or the aggravation or the intimidation nor the frustration, but we must live in our situation based on the revelation of what God has spoken. Okay, so someone in the, pre in the pew is saying, a uh, preacher, so why does God permit us to have problems. You said God loves me, right preacher? So why am I hurting so bad? I'm glad you asked and here's my theological uh, thoughts. God uses problems first to direct us. Uh, God uses pain and pressure and problems to point us into a new direction and a new path. Uh, you see, it was probably the pain that caused you to question some life experiences that you may be experiencing. At one point in your life, you had to stop and ask the question, it got to be more than just this. And I know some, some, somebody is uh, saying, I, I, God got to have more to this than this problem and this life and this, this pressure. And you say to yourself, something got to change. This is hurting too bad. And the, this is too painful. So he came, so I came to the conclusion, or you come to the conclusion, I got to get up. I, I, and someone this morning needs to say to themselves, I got to get up. I've been down too long. Uh, I've been lonely too long. And I'm broken into pieces. And I'm going to get up now and go to my father's house to find some answers. These sometimes have to get really bad for us to ask the real question, why am I here, Lord? What is my purpose in this issue? When times are good, we don't ask the questions, but when a storm comes our way uh, and the trees begin uh, 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 to bend uh, uh, and let the, the, the spots begin to get closer and tighter and the heat begins to rise, then we ask the question, Melissa, uh, and one of the benefits of a problem is it will never leave you where it found you. Uh, Jerry, a problem will pick you up at one place, and, but when it's finished with you, you'll be in a whole another place. You will never be the same once you go through a problem. Look at Brother Jonah in the Bible. He had to be swallowed up and spit out only to find out you can't run nor hide from your problems. And sometimes God want uh, you and I in a different job or a different relationship or friendship. As long as things are good and content, we will stay. But God permits us sometimes, sometimes to be swallowed up. And the next time you have a problem, you just have to ask the question, God, where is this problem leading me to? Where are you trying to direct me to? Because God uses problems, my friends, to direct us, to inspect us, to check out our character, our motives, and our integrity, uh, to show us that what's really down inside of us. Jeremiah 17 and say, 10 says, the Lord searches our heart and examines our motives. God uses problems in our lives to show us our Christian character, 
Job 7 and 18 says, why does God inspect us? Simply because he's interested in our integrity and not our, in our image. God is more interested in our character than our circumstance. God is more interested in what we are becoming on the inside and less of what we're doing on the outside. God probes us for what is good and not what just looks good. Look at the children of Israel. They wandered in the desert, Melissa, for 40 years. Why? Because every test they came for it, they flunked the exam which meant another lap around the corner, another lap in the wilderness. Uh, they kept seeing the same problem, the same dilemma, the same trouble, the same difficulties. And someone listening to me this morning can identify with that because what you're going through right now isn't something new. It's the same old stuff reheated again. You're taking the same old test and doing the same old trial, handling the same old mess. Why? Because God is trying to move you to another level. You see, we are all like a tuba toothpaste, Tony. Whenever we are squeezed, what's on the inside comes on the outside. It's, you see, the squeeze revealed whether you're right and ready to be used by God. I was drinking tea last night, and the Lord says, you're just like the tea bag. When you get in hot water, everything on the inside will reveal itself, the character of who you are. God has you. Our reaction to difficulties reveals our maturity to our faith walk and our commitment. God uses problems to refine us. Y'all looking too serious. I need you to smile at someone and says, if you don't like me now, just wait until God Finish with me. Look at your neighbor. If you don't like me now, say, if you don't like me now, just wait until God get, get finished with me. Amen. Isaiah 40 and 10 says, 48 and 10 says, do you see what I've done? I refined you, but not without fire. Isaiah 48 and 10 says, do you see what I've done? I refined you, but not without fire. I test you like silver in the furnace of affliction. God is simply saying, I am testing you in the fire of suffering. God is using suffering to purify some of us. Life is a real test not a practical exam. God is testing us through problems. So the next time you are going through a perplexing issue, ask yourself what this problem is revealing to me. God uses problems to correct us, not punish us, because Jesus went to Calvary to pay for our sins. So therefore, we know God is not a punishing God. God never punished us. He just corrects us. You remember when you were a child and your parents said, uh, get the belt, and the first words out of their mouth was, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Our, prob our parents will correct us in the future so it would not uh, be a problem in the, in, the, in the going future for us to, to, to deal with. Our parents corrected us so we can go into the right direction. And if you are a child of God, he will correct you. He will give you directions. And y'all looking so serious, and I hope I'm giving, getting to you. C.S. Lewis says that God whispers to us in our pleasures and shout to us in our pains. Yeah. Pain is God's megaphone.
Pain is God's way of saying, hello, 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 can you hear me now? And I come, and I'm coming through this. He will bring you through. And often we avoid the truth, but the truth will set you free, but because a lie will enslave you. Job 36 and 15 says, God teaches people through their suffering. Pain is used to educate us. Life is a school and problems are the curriculum. And God wants to educate all of us through our problems, through our pressures, and through our pains. Uh, do you know or do you want to know why you just went through what you've been through? Because God is waking us up. You see, trouble came to teach you some things. The irritation brought you inspiration. The separation gave you motivation. The aggravation was your declaration of independence. The isolation gave you the determination. Your pain taught you how to praise and pray, taught you how to praise and pray. Your grief helped you to grow, and your weakness taught you how to worship. God sends problems sometimes to educate us because some of us have bald spots, but all of us have blind spots. God wants to educate us and teach Teach us so that we know for ourselves that God looks down and he deliver us from the hands of the enemy. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That nothing can separate you from the love of God. We know for ourselves that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It will be formed, but it will not work. It will be set up, but it will not take you out. And you see, you don't know God is all you need until God is all you got. God uses problems to correct us. But let me share something else with you this morning. God uses problems to protect us. You see, sometimes the pain of your present problem is protecting you from a worse predicament. It can actually be a blessing in disguise. Psalm 39, Psalm 91 and 3 says, God will save you from the hidden trap of the enemy. You can't see them yet, but God protects us and hides us from the traps. And let me say to someone this morning, if you are unable to identify with your pain, just start praying because God will show you and give you a word. Proverbs 20 and 24 says, the very step we take comes from God. Otherwise, how would we know that God is there. God will make a way out of no way. God is perfecting us, my friends, changing things within us, changing things around us, changing things through us. Pain is the high cost of growth and spiritual maturity. We live in a society that people want the product without the process. We want the resurrection without the crucifixion. We want Easter Sunday, but we don't want to talk about Good Friday. We want the game, but we don't want to have the experience, the pain. We want the cross. We want the crown, but not the cross. We want the blessings, but not the burdens. We want the riches, but not the responsibilities. We want the success, but not the struggles. But the very thing that is discouraging you is the very thing God is using to develop you. I don't know what problem you are going through in the pews this morning, but I want to tell you that this is not an accident. It's all on purpose. God is using your issues to develop you, to bring purpose in your life. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 says, Paul says, these hard times are small potatoes 
These hard times are just small potatoes compared to the coming times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more than meets the eye. As I come to a closing, as you see the two teacups, there is a married couple traveling together. So they, Annie went into an antique shop and they saw these beautiful teacups. And when the sales lady handed the teacups to the couple, the teacups began to talk. The tea said, the teacup said, you know, I haven't always been a teacup. That's what the conversation said, starting with the teacups. They said, there was a time when I was just red and clay until the master showed up and took me out of my circumstances. He took me home and patted me and rolled me. He pushed me and he began to squeeze me. And I, I started yelling, why don't you just leave me alone? And the master looked at him, Linda, at the teacups and said, not yet. He then put him on a spinning wheel and there I was out of control out of my circumstances and I began to spin and spin and around and around and I couldn't stop and I felt dizzy the teacup said and I started screaming would you just stop master please just stop and the master looked at me and said not yet then he put me in the oven and I never felt so much heat and I, I wonder why would he, he torture me like this, like this and burn me like this and I yelled and I knocked on the door and I said, just let me out, you're burning me and I'm hot. And the master looked in the oven and said, not yet. Then the door opened, uh, Miss Candy, and he put me on the shelf, and, and I started to cool off, and I was chill, and, and I thought, oh, this feels really good, and I said, now that's better. And then he began uh, uh, to paint me with these, these chemicals, and all over and then I looked at him and I said why are you trying to change me like this stop it stop it and I began to cry and I began to yell out leave me alone and the master looked at me and he said not yet and then sudden uh, Pastor Lee he threw me back into the oven again this time the oven was twice as hot and I knew I was done this time the heat was just too extremely hot Pastor Lee it was just hot and I knew I was going to suffocate and I, I began to yell and scream and I cried out I can't do this journey anymore and the master looked at me and he said not yet I sure I'm sure this time I couldn't make it I had no hope I was ready to give up at this point. Then the door opened and he set me on the shelf one hour later and handed me a mirror. And he said, now look at yourself. And when I looked at myself, I said, that couldn't be me. I was just red clay. I'm not that awesome, that beautiful. I'm not that priceless. But then the master spoke to me. He said, wow, it hurts to be rolled and padded. If I would have left you by yourself, you would have been dried up and turned back to dirt. He said, the master says, I know it made you dizzy to spin around on the wheel. If I would have stopped when you asked me to stop, 
you will have just crumbled in my hand. The master said, I know it was painful hot, painfully hot when I put you in the oven, but it had to be done. You see, if I hadn't put you back in the oven, you would have cracked as soon as I took you out. I know the flames uh, were bad, and as I brushed you and painted you, uh, but if I never done that, you would have never had the character for the rest of your life. And if I never put you back in the oven a second time, Louise, uh, you would have never become a finished product. So after all you've been through, my friends, recognize how the pain, how the pain has blessed you. And be who God has made you to be. Because trouble don't last always. And that God is a healer, a, 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 a sustainer. God will see you through. Only thing you have to do is continue to pray because God <clears throat> gets your back. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise on today. For the teacup of beauty represents the image that is done when you complete us. That we are just clay, fragilely, and can be fragilely broken at any time. But when you are in the midst, you take the clay, you pat it, you roll it, you place it into the, the fire to, be, to produce something beautiful. God, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, and the people of God say amen. Amen. Now, this time, we're going to say the first name, the little light of mine. Uh, I like uh, some other people who like to sing. It's a very joyful thing to come up. And uh, it's a instrument. And
as we leave this place, wherever we are in our faith journey, remember that God, Jesus calls us to do the sort of the earth, and especially the theme was today, it's all about light of the world. Because you see all the world we we see every day from the mess from the newspaper, it is just proper. So we as a light of the world light up in the darkness, in the darkness, physical darkness, emotional darkness, and spiritual darkness around us. When Christ gives us strength, and he dies every day, we put that uh, strength, put on our light, and shine wherever we go. Let's we do that. May the Lord our Father, Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, our guide, will strengthen you, give you hope and love so that we can shine our light in the world. Amen? Amen. Amen.